What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of Apple's new iPad 2. Let's go ahead, dig in, and see if it lives up to the hype. So before I get to the review, I want to run through the specs on the iPad 2 very quickly. It has a 9.7 inch, and that's measured diagonal, IPS display with a resolution of 1024 by 768 with 132 pixels per inch or PPI and those specs are exactly the same as a previous generation. It's got a fingerprint resistant oleophobic coating which I find kind of funny. If you turn the screen off you can see all the oil that has ever graced my fingertips and I didn't just eat some french fries and touch this, I keep generally clean hands. But no matter what, there's really very little you can do uh, as far as keeping fingerprints off of this. So keep that in mind, oleophobic or not. Uh, it's being powered by Apple's new A5 system on a chip, which is actually built by Samsung, with a clock speed of 1 gigahertz on each core, and it is dual core. Now, there have been reports that that's going to throttle down to 800 and up as high as 1 gigahertz, depending on what application you are running. Uh, but Apple is advertising it as a dual core 1 gigahertz processor. Uh, it now has two cameras. Woo! It's got a camera on the back. Let's go ahead and check out the butt of the iPad 2. You can see it right in the upper left hand corner to the left of the 3G antenna if you have the 3G model. Uh, it's capable of recording video at 720p at 30 frames per second. And I'll put a link down below to the test I did of the video quality. Uh, it's really bad. So this is mostly going to be used for FaceTime and very short video, uh, video recording. Don't think this is going to replace your camera. You're going to be able to take uh, wedding shots or Ansel Adams-like pictures of waterfalls. Not going to happen. This is a very low quality camera. Uh, and speaking of low quality cameras, if you go ahead and head on out to the front, we've got that little pinhole VGA camera, uh, which is also going to be able to take videos at 30 frames per second. Although obviously at much lower quality than even the low quality found on the rear facing camera. But we'll talk about that a little more as we get into the review. Uh, what's going to keep this guy's lights on is a 25 watt hour battery life, which Apple claims is going to deliver 10 hours of battery. And that actually is a little bit of an understatement. Uh, I was easily able to get 10 hours of battery life out of this. In fact, I got about 10 hours and 14 minutes with brightness turned down about medium. You can see where actually where it is right now is where I kept it and I had video kept on loop. Uh, I did turn Wi-Fi off. With Wi-Fi on, you're gonna probably lose about two hours out of that. But if you've got a long cross-country flight or you're flying somewhere, you're gonna be able to watch plenty of video on this guy without it killing out on you, which is very nice. Uh, and it's gonna deliver about two hours better battery life performance than its closest competitor, the Motorola Zoom, which is a whole extra movie. So if media is gonna be important to you, uh, something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and jump back to the home screen. Sort of rounding out some of the specs, it's got 802.11n for Wi-Fi, it's got a 3-axis gyroscope, accelerometer, speaker and mic, all the stuff you'd expect. Uh, this new package is 33% thinner than the last generation iPad. You can see my iPad 1 versus iPad 2 video down below as well uh, to see the thinness comparison. It feels really light in hands. I never thought the first generation iPad was heavy or fat, uh, but this one definitely feels light and it doesn't sacrifice the sturdiness or build quality. It feels really solid and secure in the hands. It feels very nice. Uh, and one of the things that I do like about the iPad 2 is you don't have that wiggle the iPad 1 had when it's on a flat surface. It now stays nice and solid. Uh, on the iPad 1, if you put on a flat surface and you hit the corners, it would sort of do a little bit of a jiggle. Go ahead and look like I'm launching web pages there. Uh, it would do a little bit of a jiggle. That jiggle ain't gonna happen on the iPad 2. Uh, it's gonna come, and actually, there are, I believe, 18 different versions of this, ranging from 16 up to 64 gigs, uh, either just with Wi-Fi or with 3G on either AT&T or Verizon. No 4G to be had on this uh, in either HSPA Plus or LTE varieties. And the price range is going to have a very wide range at 499 to 829. And if you're interested in the smart covers, which we'll talk about, those are going to set you back either 39 for polyurethane or almost 70 bucks for leather. All right, so we've talked about the specs. You know what's in here. How does it perform? Uh, well, the iPad 2 is largely the same as the first generation iPad. If you've used a first generation iPad, if you've used an iPhone, if you've used an iPod Touch, 
nothing else has really changed here. It's that same experience on a larger scale. Now, a lot of people say, why would I want an iPad? It's the same as an iPhone, just bigger, or it's an iPod Touch, but larger. And to a big extent, that's true. Uh, using an Apple device and being happy using an Apple device, you have to be willing to live within its limitations. You have to know going in that you're not going to have flash support in the browser, unfortunately. Uh, you're not going to have access, at least without jailbreaking, uh, to some third-party uh, video players. You're not going to be able to play back every audio and video format. You're going to be limited to the Apple ecosystem, and you're going to have to use iTunes as that hub. Now, if you're okay with that, you're going to have a very elegant experience. The OS works very well. If you're not okay with that, you're never going to be truly happy with the iPad and you may want to look elsewhere. And I think that being able to live within the limitations uh, is really the definition of what you'd call um, a fanboy or not a fanboy words, the new F word that you see thrown around uh, on YouTube quite a bit. Uh, definitely something to keep in mind. So let's talk about the browser. Uh, the new A5 chip does make this very fast. I, again, I never thought the first generation iPad was a slow device, uh, but we are looking at a very quick experience. Again, if you look at my iPad 1 versus iPad 2 video, uh, it loads pages very, very fast, um, noticeably faster than the previous version. There's a new Safari engine in here. It might help that it's got an extra uh, bit of RAM. It's up from 500 or up from 256 to 512 here. Uh, but things just load fast. Applications load very quickly. Uh, pinch to zoom here is really quick. Uh, again, I never thought the first generation was slow, but if I want to load something like let's say my favorite Angry Birds, uh, things just load very quickly on here. Go ahead and launch it up. You get the splash screen, Rovio, and things are ready to play generally a few seconds before. Uh, what you'd have on the first generation. So there we go, ready to play. Do a quick rotate, you can go ahead and get going. Um, it does load fast. Um, one of the biggest benefits I think we're gonna see from the iPad 2 versus the iPad 1 uh, haven't been realized yet. So this is technically capable of twice the speed of the first generation and technically capable of delivering nine times the graphic performance. All the applications and all the games that are currently found uh, in the App Store were designed for the iPad 1's power. Uh, so, not much of a difference now with the iPad 1 and the iPad 2. However, moving forward, it's presumed that developers will focus a lot more on the iPad 2's prowess. So we'll see a lot of the benefits of the faster processor, uh, of the dual core, of the, actually the extra core, uh, the extra RAM uh, in here sort of as we move forward. So that is yet to be realized. So here's Infinity Blade, one of the arguably more graphics intensive games I demonstrated during my iPad 1 versus iPad 2 video. Uh, it looks beautiful, but it looked beautiful on the iPad 1. I really like the thinness and I like the design of the iPad 2. It feels very good in hand, uh, although it's going to be very tough to say upgrade from an iPad 1 to an iPad 2. You're going to get largely the similar, uh, same experience. What you're not going to get um, or what you are going to get, rather, from the first generation to the second, are those cameras, which is also going to give you access to Photo Booth, which lets you do all kinds of fun little uh, video things here, or pictures. You can use it doing video or stills. Go ahead and turn that. You can see there are nine different choices here. I demonstrated this in a previous video. Again, link to that will be down below, showing what all these different choices are. You can see if I move my hand, you can see it doing all kinds of different stuff. Uh, it's fun. It's a little bit of a gimmick. Something you can use to take new Facebook self-portraits, uh, but again, nothing that's going to replace your everyday camera. It's a fun addition. It's not a compelling reason to upgrade. Uh, a lot of people were interested in the color. Apple has had a hard time uh, shipping white devices that aren't MacBooks recently. Uh, so here we have, obviously, the white version of the iPad 2. As far as the white versus black goes, uh, I decided to go with the white version just because I thought it was different. Uh, it doesn't look yellow to me like people are reporting and I haven't had any screen bleeding issues on the sides. Uh, but I kind of wish that I had gone for the black version. Uh, the white one, for whatever reason, feels uh, a little bit cheap and looks a little bit cheap to me. I don't know if that's because I'm associating the white now with the plastic uh, MacBook. But if you have a choice between the white or the black, I definitely recommend going into the Apple Store and deciding which one's going to be right for you. If I could go back in time, probably would take out the black one, although I am very happy with the white model that we have here. So really, in summation and conclusion, it's the iPad. It's everything you know or love about the iPad, just a little bit faster. Uh, again, I think we're going to see these benefits as developers continue to uh, build and take advantage of the new platform here. You've got things like smart covers, 
uh, HDMI out and such, which are nice features, but they're definitely uh, side selling features. So here is the smart cover, for example. I'll go ahead and show you real quickly what this looks like. Uh, again, did a full demonstration of this. Uh, it is a very expensive uh, cover for your iPad, ranging anywhere from, again from $39 all the way up to $70 uh, to cover your iPad. So it uses magnets on the side. It'll auto align on the iPad too if you just sort of drag it across the bottom on the left. And that is it. And it'll wake it or put it to sleep depending on whether it's open or closed. You can go ahead and turn it into a little bit of a triangle and you can prop your iPad up while typing and you can prop it up while watching movies or whatever you want to do to not hold your iPad if you need two hands. Uh, it's pretty stable. Go ahead and see that right there. I wouldn't necessarily put much pressure on it, but it does work. It's a cover for your iPad. It does nothing, uh, however, to cover the back of your device. So you may want to invest in a third party case. Go ahead and close this up and put it right back down here. So if you are been waiting, so if you've been waiting to get a tablet and you weren't sure if the iPad 2 was for you, you've been looking at the iPad 1, you've been looking at the Motorola Zoom, uh, if you can live within the limitations of the Apple iOS ecosystem, go ahead and jump right into the iPad 2. You won't be disappointed. You're gonna get a fast browsing experience. You're gonna get one of the most elegant uh, mobile browsers that I have seen, one that just works very, very well uh, and delivers content beautifully. The screen, while the same as the last generation, still delivers very bright content. I would have liked to have seen it a little bit higher resolution. Uh, if you have a previous generation iPad or if you've got an older tablet that still works, there's not much of a compelling reason to go ahead and upgrade. Despite the extra year developers might have to develop some games, uh, you may be, may be better off skipping this generation uh, and saving your money for the iPad 3, Zoom 2, or whatever WebOS device uh, may be out then. Anyway, guys, love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree or disagree? Is the iPad 2 for you? Did you buy one? Uh, have you been enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? You're taking it back? Did you wait in line? All that good stuff. Anything else that you'd like to see on the iPad 2, leave your comments down below. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out the website for all of your tech news, and I will see you in the next video.